And we have been teaching on our Sunday services on understanding the laws of success. Understanding the laws of success. We took the first part of that teaching in the first service and then we are looking at part 2B. We started that teaching from last Sunday examining the laws. And this Sunday we will be looking at part 2B of this teaching. Understanding the laws of success. Part 2B. Every thing about life is governed by laws. There are natural laws, there are scientific laws, there are spiritual laws. From scriptures we understand that all natural laws are suspended when spiritual law comes to force. Spiritual laws are higher therefore than natural laws. They are higher than scientific laws. So no matter the laws that is at work, when spiritual laws are applied, they must generate strange dimensions of result. If natural laws generate result, how much of spiritual laws? Just anybody who understands the law, the natural laws of success can succeed. But as to the dimension of the success, and then how long that success can be retained, those are the variables there. When spiritual laws are applied, you get supernatural breakthroughs. Natural laws can only generate maximally natural results. But spiritual law is what gives you supernatural breakthroughs. Results that cannot be explained naturally. Romans chapter 8 and verse 2. Romans chapter 8 and verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Spiritual laws. They remove on the line negative natural laws that stands to block our way of success. There was famine in the land in 2 Kings chapter 7. So nothing was producing because of famine. And we all know from the natural laws, yes, there may be explanation for famine. No rain, nothing. So why do you expect productivity? So there was famine in the land. And everybody understood that because certain things naturally was out of place, so it should impact negatively on some certain areas. That's scientific. That's natural. That's acceptable by the natural man. Oh, the reason why my business... It's not driving, it's because of this economic law. Because of this. But when you engage in spiritual law, it overtakes all the natural laws and still deliver to you strange results. Praise the name of the Lord. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law, which is the book of, for supernatural results. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mind. mind. Thou shalt meditate therein in day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Good success. Supernatural loss, they guarantee good success, not just success. Outstanding success. Strange dimensions of success that the natural loss cannot deliver unto us. Please understand that every child of God is saved to shine. Not for shame and frustration. Matthew chapter 5 and verses 13 to 16. The Bible says you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savour, where will it shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and to be thrown in under foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. But on the candlestick, outstanding, so that it can give light unto all that are in the house. All you are a mark to be a pace setter, a trailblazer. You are the savior of your community. You are the savior of your family. You are the light. You are redeemed. 
to shine. You are redeemed to reign. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 13. You shall, thou shall be above only. That's the only place you are permitted to be. Thou shall be above it only. The Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shall be above only and shall not be beneath. Even if you want to, it's late. If you are redeemed, your position has changed. Your position has changed. So every one of us redeemed. We are redeemed. As stars. We are redeemed to reign. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. You are a king. Designed by God to reign. In your God ordained area of life. And thou hast made unto us our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. So whatever you are engaged in. You are expected to reign. You are designed by God to reign. To reign. Not to follow after your colleagues. To reign. To, domin to dominate. To take charge. In whatever field you are in. Praise the name of the Lord. Success is possible anywhere. As long as you understand the laws. If you know what it takes, success is possible everywhere. Isaac prospered where there was famine. Where nothing was happening. In Genesis 26, he became an envy. He prospered. Joseph prospered everywhere, even as a slave. Genesis 39 and verse 2. He prospered even as a slave. A slave boy, he prospered. <laughs> and the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. He prospered if you know the law. If you know the law and follow the law, wherever you are, God can prosper you. God can prosper you. You may be an apprentice under somebody now. God can prosper you. Don't wait until when you gain full freedom. If you understand the laws and the principles, and you are not killing that business for which you are training under, you are not playing fast game. Praise the name of the Lord. I say, man needs to be wise. Man needs to be wise. This is my master. I want me to spend four years here for where? Who's that? I won't spend more than one and a half years. And then you are cutting all manners of contact, uh, corners. Engaging in the tricks instead of learning the trade. Praise the name of the Lord. He prospered as a slave boy. Doing it right. The master said, I have not seen this kind of slave. This one cannot be called a slave. No. No. He's too diligent. He's too loyal. No. He can't be called a slave. Right there. He prospered. Praise the name of the Lord. So, success is everywhere. You can succeed anywhere. You can succeed anywhere. It is not what goes around you that determines your success, but what goes on inside of you. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. As a man thinketh in his heart. is what goes inside of you that determines your success. Not what goes around you. There was farming around. But Isaac still prospered. He still prospered. Joseph was confirmed as a slave, so to say, but he still prospered. A life of failure is an abuse to redemption. You are relevant to your world. Without you, the world will have no taste and direction. That's what the Bible says. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. It means anywhere you are, your life is to give people reason for living. You are relevant. You are the one the world is looking for. So wake up. You are not a non-entity. You are not a failure. Wake up. What is success, therefore? What is success? The accomplishment of an assignment. Accomplishment of assignment. Accomplishment. 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 
What is success number two? The attainment of a desired end. Before God created you, you already have an enviable and a glorious end for you. Romans chapter 8, verse 29 and 30. A glorious end to those he called, he justified, to those he justified, glorified. So there is a glorified destination in that profession for you, in that vocation for you, in that business for you. The attainment of a desired end. Surely there is an end for the desires, the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. It is not position or possession. Attainment of a desired end. What God has planned for you before, you know, before you ever was born. I knew thee, he was telling Jeremiah. I've already ordained you for an end, for an assignment. Accomplishment of that which God has ordained you for is what we call success. Number three, what is success? It is a continuous and ongoing attempt to build upon past achievements. A continuous an ongoing attempt to build upon past achievements. So which means that success is not a point, it is a journey. So never settle at a point. Success simply means constantly seeking new ways and strategies of getting better results. Constantly seeking new ways and strategies of getting better results. So you can't afford to stay on a level. No. Because that level you are is already tired of you. Constantly seeking for new ways and new strategies of getting things of getting better results. So it is not arriving at a peak overnight. Success is not arriving at a peak overnight. Any slope that rises up steeply is dangerous. It comes down that way. And that's why when any house is built and the staircase is constructed with steep slope, with steep, with steep is dangerous. It's dangerous. You miss one step, <laughs> you're gone. People don't like to follow the paths, the principles. They just want to arrive there one day. But that's why we have so many disasters. People are not ready to learn the laws that makes it work. To follow the laws that makes it work. No, they want to arrive there a day. A day. That's why such so-called success cannot be sustained. No, it's not. You don't arrive at the peak just in one night. No, it's gradual. It's, that's why you have steps. If I just want to, the only way to get from here now to that place is to jump. Is to jump, which is risky. Even if you are a good athlete, something can happen. Something can happen. Praise the name of God. So it's, it's safer, easier to just go like that. The same way when you want to climb back, it's easier. You climb back without any stress. And that's why it has hit that to be said. Those who jump up, they come down. But those who grow up, they stay up. So when you see any success that did not grow, it cannot be sustained. It cannot be sustained. All this fast game, it, that's what brings evil. That's why people are into evil. Because they just want to arrive there overnight. Arrive there overnight. That's why we must know the loss. And as we keep doing the loss, 
we not only succeed, but our success is sustained. Praise the name of the Lord. So he's constantly seeking new ways and strategies of getting better results. You know why this ministry cannot be destroyed by any satanic force? We got to where we are by following spiritual laws. Praise the name of the Lord. It grew. Some time ago during the last liberation program, we, we are shown how the church started. We are shown how the church started. And we began to grow and grow and grow and grow. Started then, there were benches. And then according to God's servants, you have luxury of space and all that. One person to three benches. You sit on one. You put your hand on the other one. And put your Bible on another one. Praise the name of the Lord. I saw some of those benches there. And some of them, after Amatan has beaten them, you see them, they will, they will do like this. And say, I did hear Praise the name of the Lord. And then the church began to grow and began to grow and began to grow by following scriptural principles. And we are where we are today and still growing. Some say, okay, I, I'm not there, I'm not sure. But some of you are here when the church started here. You knew how the church started. You knew some things then from one place to the other. Started small. Like child's play. And then the church began to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And here we are where we are today and it's still growing forward. That's how your life will keep growing. So don't join in this rat race. Don't join in this. Get it by all means. Only in the name of success. That's what makes, that's what can make somebody sacrifice his mother for money. All manners of evil in the name of success. It is the blessings of God that makes rich and has no sorrow. Praise the name of the Lord. He makes all things beautiful in his time. Just keep on on the principles. Keep on on the principle. Follow the laws. Follow the laws. And then you get there. And this morning, therefore, we are looking at one of the strong laws, one other strong law of success. The law of discipline. The law of discipline. The law of discipline. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verses 16 to 17. Woe to them, O Lord, when thy king is a child. And thy princess eat in the morning. Ah, ah. A whole king, priest, eating in the early morning. Anyhow. Verse 17. He said, But blessed art thou, O Lord, when thy king is the son of nobles, carries his self with dignity in, on, on every side, carries himself with discipline and dignity. A disciplined person, it will show in every area of his life. And thy princess, it induces him. You see the difference between the two people? This one just eats in the morning, just eat anyhow. He doesn't have any, just wake up, you know, even from his dream. And this other one takes his time. When it's time to eat in due time, he eats for strength. And not for drunkenness, not anyhow. Not anyhow. Just eat anyhow and all that. Eating is some people's hobby. Praise the name of the Lord. It's good to eat. But everything about life requires discipline. 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 There are some places, sometimes there is one nation. You know, went for mission work one time. One thing notable about that community, it was out of the country, and that's what they told me. Early morning, even on Sundays, early morning, they wake up, 
with rapper, you see a whole man, rapper, just early money, put chair outside in front of his seat. They are drinking alcohol. Early money. He has not even taken his bath. He has done nothing. He just woke up. And then the next thing, outside, you know, you see them do the, um, be drinking and they are there. Till in the evening. Like that. Praise the name of the Lord. What is discipline there for? Number one. Discipline is doing the right thing at the right time and at the right rate. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 12. Doing the right thing at the right time and at the right rate. Everything has a time. Every right thing has a right time. To make impact in life, you do it at the right time or else you lose the effect. You lose the effect. What is discipline? Number two, possessing a sense of mission in the pursuit of any task. Possessing a sense of mission in the pursuit of any task. First Corinthians chapter 9. And verse 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Necessity is laid upon me. Putting yourself under necessity to do certain things in the fulfillment of your destiny. In the pursuit of any task. Like some people now, in this season. They have scheduled time that they do personal outreach. They put themselves they put, they, they put themselves under that program. They are not waiting for church to announce general outreach. They have scheduled time of prayers and they do it religiously. They do it committedly. They don't need anybody. Encouragement, they don't need anything. No. In the pursuit of a task. Most of the testimonies we have people share that we read sometimes, you hear people say, I make up my mind in this season. Every midnight, 12 to 1, praying for the kingdom. Some will tell you, I made a covenant with God that I will be transporting so, 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 so number of people to church every Sunday. You see personal commitment towards the fulfillment of their own destiny. Pursuing a task. Possessing a sense of mission. You, you, are, you are urgent upon yourself. You, you approach such things with a business approach. Business-like approach. When I mean business-like, I'm talking about serious approach. Serious approach. When you see anybody taking the things of God with levity, he doesn't have something as a focus. God saw him, Bishop Eric, right from when he was in school. So much so that people tell, told him, ah, ah, brother David, take this thing easy. Take it easy now. It's not as difficult, uh, it's not as serious as that. He said, thank you. Thank you. He said, you, do, you always take everything too serious, too hard, too serious. You don't be pursuing everything like that. Take it easy now. We too, we are all Christian. He said, thank you. At a point in time, he said, look, it's no more time for, let us go. It is, I have gone. You can meet me. At another point, even his own parents, his own father, look at him. I said, what is your problem? Everything. Bible, 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 Bible. Huh? Is this Bible you will eat? He said, he said, amen. He said, at the end of the day, I'm not the only one eating it. He too is eating it. Because at the end of the day, Baba now, everything comfortable. Build house one, car, everything he needs. Now told him, are you not eating from the Bible now? Praise the name of the Lord. Possessing a sense of mission. What is 
discipline. Number three, operating as commanded and not as convenient. Operating as commanded, not as convenient. If you don't like inconvenience, you are not ready for outstanding success. Because anything that will give you greatness must take something from you. Operating as commanded, the commandment of God. They go with inconveniences, inconveniences at the end of the day to announce you. Abraham, take your only son to go and sacrifice. And then even if you ask a man to sacrifice his son, must you weary him before he gets there? And now you say you should go and sacrifice in a place that is three days journey. What kind of wickedness is that? And then the man has to now go travel three days journey. But at the end of the day, Abraham has become a generational blessing. By that instruction. Praise the name of the Lord. If you don't like inconveniences in life, you cannot assume greatness. Anything that will give you something will first of all take something from you. There is always a price you pay before you can take the price. P-R-I-Z-E. Praise the Lord. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 23. Nehemiah said in building the world of Jerusalem, we never, we put on our clothes. Many days, the only times we have to remove it because to wash it. If not, the same clothes you are wearing, the same clothes, you don't have time to change because you are too consumed with the assignment to accomplish the goal and the assignment. If you like comfort too much, you can't assume greatness in life. You have dream for a great business. And then you, are, you just like comfort. You want to eat the tomorrow today. That's something you'll be inconvenienced. You have to forfeit some things to get some other things. You have to forfeit your comfort so that later you take more of it. Praise the name of the Lord. Inconvenience. Inconvenience. Sometimes in this country, some years ago, when there was some kind of economic crunch, then we started having the SAP program. Is this SAP? Structural Adjustment Program. You remember? You now everybody started cutting his clothes. I told them in the service, it's not cutting your clothes according to your size. Because your size can be more than the clothes. You cut your clothes according to your material. Praise the name of the Lord. So everybody started adjusting. Then we started producing things we never thought we could do before. Started using soya beans for many things. You discover all manners of things. Everybody adjusting, 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 adjusting. Some never knew they could adjust. But situation has made them adjust. And then you didn't die. Nothing. Things were still going on. Praise the name of the Lord. The instructions of God sometimes can inconvenience you. But at the end of the day, it will deliver greatness to you. Hallelujah. What is discipline? Discipline means setting order to one's life or so. Setting order. Order, 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 orderliness. Setting order to your life. First Chronicles chapter 20 verse 1. Setting order. What is discipline? Number 5. Training and bringing yourself to do what you should do. You are training and bringing yourself to do what you should do. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses, 40, verses 24 to 27. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27. He said, Know ye not that they will run in a race, run all, but only one receive the prize. Only one. So if you want to receive the prize, you must do something. So run that you may obtain. You may receive the prize. If you want to, what should you do? Verse 25. And every man that struffed for the mastery is temperate, is disciplined in all things. 
Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we are incorruptible crown. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. So fight I, not as one that beat the air. But what do I do? I put my body. Keep my body under suggestion or subjection. That less that by any means when I preach to others, I myself be okay, cast away. I put my body under subjection. I don't allow my body to dictate to me. I dictate to my body. Dictate to my body. Some people, you know, cannot control their body. There are different aspects of discipline that we must discipline. We must be disciplined in, in order to attain our ultimate goal in life. Number one, discipline your taste. Discipline your taste. Discipline your taste. To get to your glorious destiny, discipline your taste. Discipline your taste. Some people are not controlled. They just want to eat everything. They want to enjoy everything. That's nothing wrong. To enjoy is good. That's part of our blessings. But discipline is doing the right thing at the right time and at the right rate. Don't live up above your size to impress people. For what? Some people are, have almost eaten away their destiny. Just like enjoyment at the expense of your future. Nothing to show. Methuselah. He lived 969 years. He was just eating and begatting. Begat this, begat that, begat this, begat that, begat this, begat that. And died. His whole biography was summarized in one sentence, one verse. As contrary to Paul the Apostle, to third of the New Testament was written concerning him. Yes, what? Live your life with meaning. Live your life with meaning. You have a business that is not yet producing. And every day you must carry people, you carry people about to eat yet here at your expense. Burning away future. Just eat, please, just feel fine. Just, it's okay, everything is okay. Yeah, just eat. Please give them this, give them this. Uh, this and this. Uh, with this, this. Today you go to Chinese restaurant, next you go to Senegalese, next one you go to this one, we'll just do this one. Just eat, please, eat, enjoy. There's nothing good in enjoying. Yes, sometimes, once in a while, it's good to go and out in there. There's nothing wrong there. But when it has now become your, and then so much resources committed to it that the expense, nothing is happening around you. The little thing that is trying to go up, you eat it up. You eat it up. Trying to build up a business, you are eating both the capital and the, the, the profit. No record, nothing. I told them in the, in the first service, small business that is just coming up, that has prospect. Okay, I want to be selling soft drinks and some little, little things. And then, no, no, lack of discipline. No control. No control. Anytime you enter, ah, the weather is hot. Give me two bottles of malt. Cold one, cold one. They give you, say, hey, bring that jug. That's my jug. That's my jug. You don't drink in the bottle again. That's my jug. They bring the jug. They pour the two. You say, I, now two, I, tell you, I say two. How many is it? This is not. Bring, fill it, fill it. And you know it takes four bottles to, to fill that jug. Praise the name of God. And before you know what is happening, you have eaten up the business. Eating up the business. All these years you are working. And you, can, you don't have any property to show. You think you will be there forever. They say it's civil service job, no problem. We did. Jesus said, occupy till I come. It's only you that they say you should occupy. And by the time a person has worked 30 years in a place, he's already almost 60. And so they serve him retirement letter. Says, start 
preparing in the next two months for your leave, retirement leave and something. Thinking starts. Because all the 30 years have been wasted in eating. Just eating. And he has privileged position. They gave him a house. They gave him car. They gave him everything. So he's not thinking of nothing. He has not invested nothing. He's just traveling, eating. Today he will throw this party. Throw this party. Throw this party. You know, I just do this one. Just eating and eating and eating. And 30 years he has worked. He has no any property. No land. Nothing. He will now start writing petitions. Why they should give him more years. Is that life? Some people are eating up their destiny. Eating up. Eating up in what? They are not disciplined in their things. They want to wear what no, man, no person has worn before. They want to eat what nobody has eaten. And yet nothing to show. Nothing to show. And landlord is harassing you. The day you change your car, oh, he brings another increase of uh, this. Thing. That landed property you have is for 15 years now. You have not stepped there. And then you are eating with ten fingers in your house. Calling your friends to come and... Let's go out now. Well, they, they like that kind of thing. Yes, yeah, so... Yes, yeah, so let's go. They follow you again. Praise the name of the Lord. Wake up. Wake up. Every day is counting. Life is rolling. Don't let your children insult you tomorrow. Praise the name of the Lord. Rise up. And walk. And walk. And walk. And be disciplined. In this ministry, why you see things happening? It's not just the anointing. Discipline. You can't spend any hour. There is formula for doing everything. You must not spend beyond a particular point every month. Discipline. Discipline. People do everything out of their way, wanting to impress people that don't like them, that will never, never be impressed. Carry all your money to go and buy one dress to wear. You know, everybody is looking. You know, you are doing like this. They look at you and say, "This one doesn't even know what fitting." They will always have one bad statement. Somebody is riding a car. He said, oh, "This one, we went to school together. It's my mate. It's my mate." And then you too. What you don't have, what is not your size. The money that you should go and invest to complete your building. That you only did foundation for 12 years ago and left it. You now go and carry and go and do for another money to borrow, to ride a car that can spoil one day. And now be looking for another money to borrow, to repair it. Is that life? God someone be sure you say you only have classmates, you don't have life mates. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. So stop pressurizing your life. That you are in the same class with somebody 20 years ago does not mean that 20 years ago you will be on the same level. It is what you do to your life that determines whether you become mate or not. Praise the name of the Lord. So wake up. Be disciplined. Be disciplined. Be disciplined. Be dis discipline your test. Don't eat with ten fingers. Don't eat with ten fingers. Be investment conscious. Don't throw your family in jeopardy. Move from one rented house to another one, to another one, to another one, to another one, to another one. All your children, they have delivered them in rented apartments. It's not as if God has not blessed you because you are not disciplined. Is it cloth we eat? All the food that uh, Methuselah ate, nobody is talking about that. It's, it's, it's exploit that they want to hear. Praise the name of the Lord. You will be a blessing to your generation. 
not a liability. Be disciplined with your finances. Don't live your life anyhow. That's why some people are still living a life of borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow. Borrow this, borrow money, borrow... borrow. Why? Not because what you have is not enough, but you are just in discipline with finances. No planning, nothing. You start your month, no budget, nothing. Nothing. Until you get to a point your children will be following you and say, Daddy, we have no eating. I have no eating. The wife will say, go and meet. Oh, yeah, all of you, go and meet him. Go and meet him. Go and meet him. If he's not listening to you, cry, cry. Cry. Cry, roll on the ground. Do something. Don't do like this. Is that it, my No plan. Nothing. Nothing. And then you leave everybody suffering. That's not life. You say, let's join hand in prayer. They have prayed with you. They have joined hand. They are tired. It's your indiscipline, not any hand. God is a prayer answering God. Be disciplined with your finances. Be disciplined with your association. It's not everybody that can be your friend. If anybody is not increasing you, it will be decreasing you. You're a child of God. And then you have evil friends. People who don't know God. How will they not derail you? And then, impartation of the things that makes for success is injected in your life. They want they, they to pollute it and then it. Because you want to be a friend to everybody. It's only a fool that is a friend to everybody. Praise the name of the Lord. Life, friendship is by choice, not by force. Don't live your life. Everybody cannot be your friend. It means you don't know where you are going. Why they can't, they, they may not be your enemy, but everybody cannot be your friend. This is my friend, this is my friend. You know, I'm a man of the people. I'm a woman of the people. How will you not compromise your destiny? They will push you to do things that you will never want to do. Praise the name of the Lord. Iron sharpness, iron. Iron sharpness, iron. Is it not fresh? Friendship that took you to some places you shouldn't have ever gone in your life. It's my friend. Escort me. Let me see that my friend. Yeah, escort you there from there. Okay. Ah, and I was planning to just rush to Asaba today. Oh. Let's go now. I mean, what are you doing? Yeah, well, let's go now. You know, I don't have anything to do. Let's go. You go there from Asaba. Ah, there's this. I just wanted to touch one small village there. Oh. When we are coming back. Inside, inside, inside uh, uh, your branch of Ugeli, and you go inside. It's deep. There's one small village there. There's one man I want to see. Just I won't take time. And they take you to Habali's place. You a Christian? They are introducing you. And this one, my friend. I'm sorry, Baba. We can't just come with my friend. We are going. No, I just we just branch. They want to look at you and say, okay, move close. What I'm seeing now, I see death. Oh, I see death. I see death. He looks at you and see you are still a young man. Mm, I think I see death. So oh. your mother is still alive. Before God, he wants you to kill your mother. He says, Yes, yes, yes. Mm, it's a long time you saw her. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. You have been thinking of something. Yes, yes, yes. If you have mine, shouldn't you think? And at that moment, you forget about your Christianity. Everything, fear has been injected inside of you. And the moment they tell you something, you are finished. Discipline because of lack of discipline. Anyone that is not helping you <laughs> is causing is going to cause pain for you. So wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Life is so precious. God has a max strange success for you. 
Don't give it cheaply. Praise the name of the Lord. May the Lord give you understanding. In the name of Jesus. It's our next level banquet service. You are due to change level. And whether the devil likes it or not, you must change level. I say you must change level. I say you must change level. In the name of Jesus. In Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18. We see that our God is a God of pro progression. Continuous motion. But the part of the justice as a shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. In the Amplified Version, he talks about, he put it this way, the part of the uncompromisingly just and righteous is like the light of dawn. I like that impression, uh, uh, explanation, that picture. It's like the light of dawn that shines more and more, which means brighter and clearer until it reaches its full strength and glory in the perfect day. Anyone who sees you now, they don't know you yet. They don't know. They, are, they, are, they have not seen the real you. Because what they are saying now, oh, it's just a passage. It's not a complete form. So don't let anybody pollute your heart. Don't let anybody intimidate you. Oh, God may have blessed them. They may be where they are today, but you are still coming. They will soon know who you are. I said they will soon know who you are. Yeah. Why? Because God is at work in you. Very soon, they will see the real you. Yeah. So don't let anybody tell you you're a failure. You're not a failure. You're on your path to a glorious destiny. Praise the name of the Lord. Stop getting angry of where you are. No. If you must get angry, it must be a positive anger. Not getting you to frustration. God is still at work in me. What you see now is not a complete fashion. It's just a face. The next face is about to open up. I said the next face is about to open up. I said the next face is about to open up. In the name of Jesus. What is next level therefore? Next level means supernatural change of position. Supernatural change of position. What is next level? Number two, next level means scaling new heights. Scaling new heights. What is next level? Number three, it means being transformed to a better state. Being transformed to a better state. Get ready, something better is about to hit you. Whatever good thing that is around you now, it will get better. I'm not hearing a loud amen. amen. What is next level? Next level simply means operating higher authority. Higher authority. What is next level? Next level simply means commanding fresh exploits. Commanding fresh exploits. Commanding fresh exploits. After this service, before this week is over, you will have a new testimony in the name of Jesus. What is next level? It means growth, improvements, or furtherance of a person. Growth, improvements, or furtherance of a person. Growth. So, whatever it is that is at any level in your life now, it is growing in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Expect an improvement in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Where you are is already tired of you. It's time to take a positive move. Where you are is tired of you. It's time to take a positive move. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 3. You have come past this mountain long enough. Turn. 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 It's time to turn. To turn to a better thing. Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. Where your eyes are already polluted. Turn. Move. If you don't want to be removed, move. Arise and depart for this is not your rest. This is not your rest. This is not your rest. Move. This is not your rest. Move. This is not your rest. Move. 
Move. Move. Move. Hallelujah. If you don't want to be removed, move. If you don't want to be removed, move. If you don't want to be removed, move. It is time to move. Tell your neighbor it is time to move. Come on, say it again. It is time to move. Say it emphatically. It is time to move. Now say to yourself, it is time to move. I am moving. I am moving. I am moving. What are the requirements to get to your next level? What are the requirements to get to your next level? Number one, what are the requirements to get to your next level? Number one, destroy the I have arrived mentality. Don't settle for where you are. Destroy the I have arrived mentality. Philippians chapter 3 and verses 13 to 14. Philippians 3, 13 to 14. Destroy the I have arrived. You have not arrived. You have not arrived. Don't settle. Don't settle. I can't not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. I can't not myself to have reached my ultimate. That's what he said. I can't not myself to have reached my maximum. There are still many things. There are still many places to conquer. There are still many things ahead. As a result, destroy the I have arrived mentality. Number two, forget the things that are behind. Number two, forget the things that are behind. You want to move to your next level, forget the things. Forget the failures of yesterday or else it will tie you down. Forget the disappointment of yesterday, it will tie you down. If one person disappointed you, there are still many other people. Praise the name of the Lord. If one door closes, there are still several to open. If you lost a job, thank God you have not lost your life. If you lost a beloved one, you have not lost your life. So then say to take the next step. You lost a job, you are not the first person to lose a job. You lost your parents, you are not the first person to lose your parents. You lost your wife, you are not the first person. You lost your husband, you are not the first person. Take the next step. Don't settle on yesterday's failure. Neither should you settle on yesterday's achievement. Forget those things. Forget those things and leap over. Every little thing. Instead of you to move forward, every little thing, you keep crying. You keep crying. You keep crying. If, if, if that brother has not disappointed me, if he might not me too, I will have said to you. I will have said to you. And I give everything to that relationship. Oh. Eh? Eh? Bro, bro, brother Hogan, eh? it's God that we, it's, God, it's you and God. Just leave him. Take the next step. Praise the name of the Lord. Every little thing, if not because I lost my husband. That's not the reason why you should be on the same spot. You have lost, you may have lost your husband, you have not lost your God. Take the step and move to the next level. Praise the name of the Lord. Move. And then your life will be a testimony to all. Life will be a testimony to all. I've met wonderful women before who have lost their husband many years and today they are a sucker of hope to many people. They are a pillar of encouragement. They are, an, they are authority. There is nothing that has happened to you or is happening to you that has not happened to somebody somewhere sometime. And they overcame. And today they are celebrity. You can't die in that position. Praise the name of the Lord. Forget the things that are behind. Oh, help me touch your neighbor and say, forget the things that are behind. Forget the things that are behind. Come on, push that person. Forget the things that are behind. Praise the name of the Lord. You can never move forward looking backward. You are only, it's settling for a crash. When you see a driver driving, he's going forward. And then he's looking, 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 looking. 
If, if by any accident you are inside that car, just tap and say, hey, bros, wait first, I won't drop. I won't drop. I say I won't drop now by force. Because he will end up in a crash. Stop looking backward. Praise the name of the Lord. If you don't let what has passed pass, you may pass away with the past. Forget those things that are behind. Number three, reach forth to the things that are ahead. Reach forth. Reach forth. Take a step forward. Reach forth. Reach forth means press towards the things that are ahead. That's how to move to your next level. Press. Press. Step into the things that are ahead of you. Stop looking back. People who look back, they go back. Praise the name of the Lord. Where you look is where you go. When you look forward, you go f- forward. Reach forth, which means take a step forward. And number four, be consistent in kingdom service. Be consistent in kingdom service. Let kingdom service be a lifestyle. Make it a lifestyle. Make it your lifestyle. Make it your lifestyle. Make it your lifestyle. Praise the name of the Lord. Make it your lifestyle. Job 36, 11. Make it your lifestyle. Matthew 6, 33. Make it your lifestyle. And then you will see God decorating your destiny in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm so thrilling my heart because somebody here is just about to move to his next level. Who is that person? If you are the one, give him a loud shout! First thing first before we partake of the communion. You are here this morning. You are not born again. You have not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Give me this opportunity. I will pray for you. A simple prayer. Jesus will come into your life. And then, there will be a supernatural force that will put you where you belong in life. Shortly, we are going to be partaking of this communion. It is the body of Jesus. It is the blood of Jesus. Jesus was never on the same spot. He was never decorated. I mean, he was never disappointed. He was never frustrated. He kept moving, even in the midst of opposition. No opposition could stop him until he achieved his mission. You will fulfill your mission on earth. You will be an attraction. They had Jesus. They said, what wisdom is this? With this mighty works. That is super success. By this communion today, that will be your portion. In the name of Jesus. First thing first, you are not born again. You want to give your life to Jesus wherever you are. Quickly, I'd like you to rise up on your feet now. Wherever you are, rise up on your feet. Let me pray with you quickly. Rise up. You gave your life to Jesus before. You backslidden. You want to return. Now is the time. Now is the time. The first step is a step of obedience to God. Wherever you are, therefore, I'd like you to rise up. Start walking towards me. Take your Bible, your bag. Don't leave anything on your seat. Quickly, quickly, church, help me clap for them. Start coming, start coming, start coming. You are not born again. Don't wait for anybody. Don't wait for anybody. Start coming, quickly, 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 quickly. Wherever you are, church, help me clap for them. Don't sit, don't sit. Somebody is still fighting in his heart. Something is telling you, go, 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 go. Another thing is telling you, oh, you can do it another time. That's the devil. That's the devil. He wants you to meet your blessing. Thank you. Rise up. Rise up. Forget about your neighbor. Your neighbor is born again. Except you. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Where is that sister? God is speaking to you now. Rise up and begin to come. I'm waiting for you. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. God bless you. Church, don't stop clapping for them. Jesus is saving soul this morning. Jesus is saving soul this morning. Come quickly. Come quickly. It is your day of salvation. Oh, are you clapping for them? They are coming from everywhere. They are coming from everywhere. Everybody is born again except you. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Don't let the devil tell you you will do it tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be late. Come quickly. God bless you. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Oh, are you clapping for them? They are coming. Jesus is saving souls this morning. Jesus is saving souls this morning. Jesus is saving souls this morning. Come quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All those coming, join us quickly. All those in front, can I ask you to bow your head? Put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I recognize I'm a sinner, but you died for me. You saved me from my sins. You deliver me from my unrighteousness. Jesus, my heart is open. Come into my heart today. Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe you in my heart. And now I confess you. I'm saved. I'm born again. Thank you, Father. 
In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please, let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these precious souls that you have drawn into your kingdom today. I ask for the mark of God upon them. Keep them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. No more stagnation for you in the name of Jesus. Where you never expect to be in the next three years. By the end of this month, you are getting there in the name of Jesus. This week. There shall be no loss for you on any side. In the name of Jesus. Return with your testimony of next level this week. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I have dominion. And I take dominion. Congratulations.